from the Steampunk Explorer Newsroom. A world of hair-raising adventures, splendiferous personalities, fantabulous creations. Welcome to the world of Steampunk. Welcome to Episode 6 of the World of Steampunk. I'm Stephen Beale, editor and publisher of the Steampunk Explorer, and once again, I'll be your host. We like to think that all our guests on this show are special, but this time we have an extra special guest. We'll be spending a Steampunk Minute with Gail Carragher, one of the top-selling authors in the Steampunk world. She'll be telling us about her plans for this year, about some of her recent books, and why she'll never be far from the literary world she calls the Parasolverse. You won't want to miss it, but first, a special report. Steampunk is, in part, a subgenre of science fiction. And as we all know, science fiction is full of wild tales about computers and robots that become self-aware and try to conquer the world. Many people think this future has already arrived, due to recent developments in artificial intelligence. Computers still can't think in the same way that humans do, but AI programs like Dolly and Midjourney can create images that look like they were made by humans. Then there's ChatGPT, which can write poems, essays, songs, and even computer programs. At the Steampunk Explorer, I've adopted a policy of avoiding use of AI-generated content unless it's to help illustrate the topic, and that's what I'll do here. So how do these programs operate? They begin with a neural network, a computer system that replicates certain aspects of biological brain functions. Developers train the neural network to perform different tasks, often by exposing it to content. Depending on the task, this can include text, images, and sounds. AI software can be a useful tool. We've used it to upscale video and to convert black and white images to color. The controversy involves what's known as generative AI, software that can synthesize content seemingly out of thin air. Using a program like Midjourney, you can enter a text prompt like Edgar Allan Poe as a steampunk, and the software gives you a series of images corresponding to your request. It turns out that steampunk is ideally suited for this. With Midjourney, you can steampunk pretty much anything, historical figures, rocket ships, household appliances, and more. I think we all can agree that these images look pretty cool, but they require no artistic talent on my part, just a series of simple prompts in Midjourney. Many professional artists see programs like this as a threat to their livelihoods, but they're also opposed to these programs because the software was trained using online images without the consent of the creators. Not every artist is opposed to generative AI. Some see these programs as useful tools for conceptualizing art, but a handful of artists have taken legal action against the developers of some of these programs on grounds of copyright infringement, and the controversy isn't going away anytime soon. Then there's ChatGPT, an example of what's known as a large language model. It's currently in an experimental preview phase, but it's already been used to generate articles, music, fiction, poetry, and lots more. Some college professors have even caught students who use ChatGPT to write essays. We recently tested the program by conducting an interview about steampunk. We conducted the interview by typing in questions on the ChatGPT website. But to make it more interesting, we took a portion of the responses and used an AI-based text-to-speech program to convert the answers to spoken words. Then we created a steampunk robot in mid-journey and added some animation effects to make it look like the robot was thinking and talking. Here's the result. Are you familiar with steampunk? Yes, I am familiar with steampunk. It is a subgenre of science fiction and fantasy that typically features steam-powered machinery, especially in a setting inspired by industrialized Western civilization. During the 19th century, steampunk often incorporates elements of fantasy and horror, and it can be found in literature, film, television, fashion, and other forms of media. You say it typically features steam-powered machinery. 
What about Nikola Tesla? Nikola Tesla was a real-life inventor and scientist who made many contributions to the field of electrical engineering in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. While Tesla's inventions and ideas were not specifically related to steam power, they have been incorporated into some forms of steampunk fiction as an alternative or augment to traditional steam-based technology. So, Tesla's work and inventions are not typical in steampunk, but it is not uncommon to see it being used as a nod to his work. Some people have said that steampunk is dead. What do you think? Steampunk, like many subcultures, has gone through various stages of popularity and engagement. There have been some people that have said that steampunk is dead, but as a language model, I do not have the ability to form opinions. However, I can tell you that the subculture is still active and has a dedicated community of enthusiasts, who continue to create, participate, and attend events and conventions, as well as produce music, art and literature. Some people argue that the steampunk subculture has become more mainstream, which leads to a decline in participation from some of the original enthusiasts, and others argue that the subculture is evolving and adapting to new technologies and influences. Steampunk is a creative and dynamic genre, and as such, it will continue to evolve and change over time. I am the editor of an online publication called The Steampunk Explorer. Are you familiar with it? I'm sorry, but as an AI language model, I don't have the ability to access the internet, so I am not familiar with any specific online publications, including the Steampunk Explorer. However, I can tell you that there are many online publications and websites that focus on steampunk culture and lifestyle, and they often feature articles, reviews, and other content that is of interest to steampunk enthusiasts. These publications can be a great resource for information on new books, music, events and more, as well as a great place to connect with other people who share your interest in steampunk culture. You're not familiar with the Steampunk Explorer? You hurt my feelings. I apologize if my previous response caused any offense. My main function is to provide information and answer questions based on the knowledge and data that I have been trained on, and my lack of knowledge about specific websites should not be taken as a personal offense. I hope you understand that my main goal is to assist and provide information, and I apologize if my previous response caused any frustration. Okay, I accept your apology. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. I'm glad I could help. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. This was just a portion of the original interview. You can see a longer version on our website. As I said, ChatGPT is currently in a preview phase, and some of its answers were factually incorrect, but the results were still uncanny. Why should you care about this? Organizers of steampunk conventions and festivals now have to decide if they'll allow AI-generated images at their events. Self-published authors and independent musicians have to decide if they'll use AI-generated images on their book and album covers. All of us are likely to be dealing with issues related to artificial intelligence for years to come. And now, a look at upcoming steampunk events. Gail Carriger is one of the top-selling authors in the steampunk world. She's best known for her Parasol Protectorate series and other tales set in what's known as the Parasolverse. The stories take place in an alternate 19th century where vampires and werewolves are accepted members of society. Trained as an archaeologist, she's also known for her distinctive fashion sense and her fondness for tea. We are here with best-selling author Gail Carriger. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Great, great. Well, I know you wanted to talk about some of the events you'll be attending this year. Uh, we're all steampunk fans get to see you. I'm so excited. It was really interesting to me that the first events to sort of jump on the clo like the reopening of the world seemed to be steampunk. I was like, Oh, you guys, this is great. <laughs> so yeah, so my first sort of big fan events are all steampunk events this year. I'm I'm super excited about it. 
Okay, and it starts with a stupid Cupid, right? Yes, in Hartford, Connecticut, or just outside a suburb of Hartford, Connecticut, on the East Coast, which is great. I don't, I'm on the West Coast, so I don't get to go to the East Coast very often, and it seems like super fun event. So I'm going to be there on Friday and Saturday. I'm doing panels and lots of stuff. There's even, I even persuaded them to do a, a coffee clutch, which I guess with me is a tea clutch. So there's, there's like a meet and greet, and it's, it's going to be really fun. Okay, and then you're going to Chicago, right? Yes, and then I'm going to the Chicago steampunk event as well. The one, the one I know about. <laughs> and and I think there was another. What WesterCon was the third one? And then the third one that I know about is WesterCon, and I'm I'm starting to get people approaching me for the latter part of the year. But okay. WesterCon is is a sci-fi fantasy convention primarily. It's in Anaheim in the LA area. And I'm just I'm just trying to get a bunch of steampunk people to come, so it's like a steampunk takeover. <laughs> yeah, well, you being there, you'll probably uh, that's probably what will happen. Fingers um, crossed. Yeah, there you go. Now, um, you're best known to steampunk fans for your stories in the Parasol verse. That's right. But, yeah. Okay, uh, but but in recent years, you've been branching out into other areas of science fiction and fantasy. Uh, can you tell me about them? Sure. I've done some urban fantasy, paranormal romance stuff set in the Bay Area where I grew up. So I kind of wanted to to give a nod to the weird of the Bay Area in a supernatural setting. So um, I've done all, lots of queer characters and obviously it's the Bay Area. And, um, and yeah, and then I've also been uh, moving much more recently heavily into science fiction because I just love sci-fi and getting a chance to write aliens and like alien cultures is is really exciting to me partly i think because of my background as an archaeologist i literally love i love culture conflict and i love thinking about like the mechanics of culture from an anthropological perspective and so i use the skill set when i'm developing alien races and it's been really fun okay well now, now do you think your steampunk fans would enjoy reading these stories as well I think if you like me, you like my voice. So, and and by voice, I mean the author perspective of voice, which is I have a sort of kind of lighthearted, breezy, comedy of manners, fun attitude. And I bring that to everything I write. I, I tend to describe my books as hugs. So if you want a book that's like a warm hug, then and then and you like my steampunk stuff, you will probably like the other stuff that I write because it's very similar. Okay, good. Now, that leads to an obvious question that I'm sure would be on the minds of many of our viewers here. Um, can your fans expect any more stories in the Parasol verse? Yes, always. Um, I, I'm very rarely out, out of the Parasol verse for very long. I love revisiting it. I built myself a sandbox intentionally so I could play in it all the time. I have lots of side characters that people know I love and, and are expecting more stories from. So yeah, there's always gonna be more in the Parasol verse. Don't worry, uh, sometimes it's a little eccentric now. I mean, I think steampunk is full of eccentrics. So I get to be eccentric with my work. So I did like, a, my, my most recent release is a sort of hilarious compilation. I, I put my steampunk vampire character, Lord Akaldama up as an advice columnist on my blog over the years and fans are allowed to ask him questions and he just gives terrible vampiric advice back. <laughs> and, and so I, I compiled all of those into a little ebook basically um, and, and with lots of other sort of steampunky bits and bobs like essays about world building and deleted scenes from my more popular books and things like that. Um, so, you know, that went out into the world recently. I think, yeah. So there's always something in the steampunk arena that I'm I'm writing and and publishing, because um, I'm well aware that I have fans of that universe in particular, and I want to make sure that they always get a little something. Okay, yeah, I'm sure they'll be glad to hear that. Now, um, and and I guess this is a nice segue because uh, lately you've been doing more self-publishing, where you're you're not only the author, you're the publisher. Um, how has yeah. that worked out for you? It's really fun. I'm a bit of a control freak, so I like it. Um, and I'm a bit of a tinkerer. Uh, oh, shocking, coming from steampunk, but and that means I like to tinker with my own career as well. I like to be experimental and and brave and interesting and doing things. Um, so yeah, it was it was pretty natural for me. In fact, my 
agent, among others, was one of the people who was like, you might try self-publishing, Gail, it might be time. Uh, and that's because I tend to have something kind of unique or different or interesting that I would like to try that traditional publishers just aren't really interested in. You know, something like novella length or a standalone romance that's set in my world or short stories or whatever. And, you know, Tread just isn't, isn't going to want that stuff or, or even if they didn't really know what to do with it. So that's kind of how I started, and I liked it so much that I've just sort of kept going with it. Uh, the immediacy of it appeals to me. I can bring a book out a lot faster than a traditional publisher can, um, and I and like I said, I get to be a lot more experimental than than a traditional publisher would really, I think, like me to be. <laughs> yeah, I guess advice from a vampire probably would not be uh, at the top of the list for uh, your your. Uh... No, no. Yeah, so and, and and I can just do that. I can just be like, well, I have this. I'm gonna like put it all together, slap a gorgeous cover on it, and send it out into the world, and and see if they like it. And it's a much lower risk for me, obviously, as well, because um, you know I don't have to get it out to as many people as a traditional publishing house would. Okay, now just to wrap up, um, where can people learn more about what you're up to? Uh, just find it on my website. It's it's gailcarriger.com, and that's G-A-I-L-C-A-R-R-I-G-E-R.com, and everything is there. You can find find out where I am on social media, or better, join my newsletter if you're a reader. Um, the newsletter is where you find out about, like, all of my cover art first, all of my new information, and then I always have, like, secret giveaways and projects and things that only the newsletter gets. I do a lot of newsletter exclusives, so you get a lot of perks if you're if you're on my newsletter and it's only once a month. So like, I'm not intrusive about it or anything. Um, yeah. Well, I, can, and that's I, can, I, I can attest to that because I get the newsletter. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> and I always try to tell like funny stories and ridiculous things that have happened to me. Um, yeah. So I probably have like little gossip from the conventions when I come back and things like that. Um, but yeah, that's where, that's where my events are listed. Um, everything is either in the newsletter or on the website or both. Okay. Well, I think uh, that wraps it up. So uh, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It has, uh, it has been really, really lovely. And I really hope that I see some people at events who've come out of the show. So make sure to come up to me and tell me um, if, if you watch the show, because I'm, I would love to know that. Thank you, Gail Carragher. And thanks to all of you for watching. We'll see you next time.